Clemson defensive star Clellan Farrell, 99, gets in on a group hug with teammate Austin Bryant, 7, and coach Dabo Swinney in the second half of the CFP National Championship game against Alabama on Monday night, Jan. 7, at Levi's Stadium. Farrell, a defensive end, could play home games in the NFL in Santa Clara. The 49ers pick number 2 in the NFL Draft. Chris Carlson AP Clemson defensive star Clellan Farrell, 99, gets in on a group hug with teammate Austin Bryant, 7, and coach Dabo Swinney in the second half of the CFP National Championship game against Alabama on Monday night, Jan. 7, at Levi's Stadium. Farrell, a defensive end, could play home games in the NFL in Santa Clara. The 49ers pick number 2 in the NFL Draft. Chris Carlson AP Santa Clara San Francisco 49ers general manager John Lynch pulled some strings to help his new Bay Area adversary over the weekend. Oh and Raiders general manager Mike Mayock, whose hiring was made official last week, tried at the last minute to gain a credential for the college football playoff national title game at Levi's Stadium on Monday night. But the strict credentialing window was closed, even for one of the NFL's 32 most powerful personnel executives with a lengthy career as an analyst at the league's powerhouse television network. So Lynch out some high-ranking 49ers executives to get Mayak in the building. The game featured a vast collection of college talent, including Clemson's coveted pass rusher Clellan Farrell, who embraced the spotlight following the Tigers' 44-16 beatdown of top-ranked Alabama. We had a dominant performance, Farrell told the beat with purple and orange confetti streaming down on the field. Obviously, Alabama has a lot of good players, but it's all about the team. We dominated. That's all that really matters. The 49ers and Raiders could draft a talented pass rusher off the edge who's capable of dominating. San Francisco might consider Farrell at no. 2 in the NFL draft while Mayox Raiders pick fourth after dealing star defensive end Khalil Mack to the Chicago Bears. Farrell made one of the final big defensive plays of the game, stopping tied quarterback two at Tonga Vailua on fourth and goal at the two-yard line to keep Clemson ahead by 28 in the fourth quarter. Our team needed a play, Farrell said. I kind of just remember the formation from watching film. I kind of sniffed that one more. That meant a lot to our team, for sure, Clemson's statement was loud and clear. It dethroned Nick Saban's program and looks like it won't go away anytime soon. Freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence, 20 of 32, 347 yards, 3 touchdowns, no interceptions, has two years left before he's eligible for the draft. Based on Monday's performance, Lawrence is a favorite to be drafted first overall when he comes out. Lawrence's promising future, along with a supremely talented roster littered with top recruiting classes, led to Farrell making an epic recruiting pitch on the stage after Clemson was awarded the championship trophy. If you want to come to a program, Farrell yelled into the microphone in front of a national television audience, where you got to worry about your coach all up in the locker room, dancing, come to Death Valley. The reference, of course, was to former Death Row Records executive Suge Knight at the 1995 Source Awards, when he called out Sean, Puff Daddy, Combs and made a pitch for music artists to join the West Coast label. and coach Dabo Swinney was unfamiliar with the reference, despite being known for his dancing, but had a ringing endorsement for what Farrell could bring at the next level. If he goes pro, he's going to bring anything and everything, Swinney said, including Farrell and group of leaders that helped bring Clemson its second title in three years. Quote dot dot dot. I told them, you've led us all year, got to lead us tonight, so I'm just super proud of them, and I know they're going to love and enjoy this but go on and do great things, Farrell likely won't be around to see if his viral recruiting pitch worked. The redshirt junior is expected to be an early first round pick in April, though he hadn't ruled out returning for his senior season. I'll sit down with my family, man, and make a decision. It'll be a tough one. How can you leave something like this, he said. 
but I'll get a decision made within the next week or so. Aside from his crucial fourth down stuff, Farrell worked mostly to a stalemate against Alabama top prospect Jonah Williams, the left tackle who played at Folsom High School. There was one moment in the first quarter when Farrell overpowered Williams and hit Tunga Vilo to force an incompletion. Farrell finished with four tackles, two solo, and 1.5 tackles for loss but didn't register a sack, leaving him with a career-best 11.5 on the season. Clemson's superiority, and Alabama's scattered performance, were both startling. Lawrence hitting receiver Justin Ross for a 74-yard touchdown in the third quarter made Levi's Stadium shake while Tiger fans packed on the north side brought the vibe of Death Valley to the Bay Area. The atmosphere was raucous, particularly during an exciting first half that saw three lead changes. However, there were empty seats throughout the stadium, likely to due to the fear of rain, the distance of the campuses from Santa Clara and the cost of traveling to the Bay Area. Clemson won where 49ers legend Dwight Clark, a Clemson alum, is honored with a statue on the north side of the stadium. Clemson's end zone, fittingly, was the same end zone where the 49ers marked Clark's play, the catch, from the 1981 NFC title game at Candlestick Park. Former 49ers linebacker Patrick Willis was elected to the College Football Hall of Fame on Monday and was on the field for the coin toss. He received a loud ovation during a video interview on the Jumbotron in the second half. The game went without a hitch, and the 49ers hope to have high-stakes games of their own in January's down the road. Perhaps Mayock will have the credentialing process down by then. Perhaps Farrell will be suited up in red and gold. San Francisco 49ers tight end Garrett Selleck played most of the season with a broken right thumb. He recently had surgery and expects to be ready for the off-season conditioning program in April. January 7, 2019 4.32 p.m. January 4, 2019 2.12 p.m. January 4, 2019 10.39 a.m. January 3, 2019 6.20 p.m. January 3, 2019 11.14 a.m.